Right now, you have a pile of cash that's hiding inside your prospect and customer database or pipeline. And I don't care if you're a brand new rep, don't care if you're a seasoned pro, and especially if you're an owner with a team in years in business, because this database is really big. So in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you six different ways that you can apply right now to tap into this pile of cash that's hiding inside this book of business so you can make even more sales. This video was inspired by two people. Number one was Jeff. Jeff replied to my Instagram story. Let me get this turned here. He replied to my Instagram story that I filmed when uh, it was really junky outside. It was cold and rainy, snowy, south was freezing over. And I was trying to inspire people to say, hey, just because this is downtime doesn't mean selling has to freeze. Freezing temps doesn't mean sales freeze. So Jeff says, heck yeah, bro. Went through old leads stuck at home this weekend and signed another one yesterday. Love your info. Jeff, congrats on applying this stuff. He's gonna, this is tip one I'll be sliding into in a minute. And then also um, uh, a customer of mine named Josh. Josh reached out to me and goes, Adam, I've got this database. We've been in business for years. How do I turn this into more revenue for long-term gain? Because this is all a balance about now money and later money. We often get too short-sighted thinking now, 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 when we have this long-term potential. Because as they say, you dig the well for the water before you are thirsty. That's the big idea, right? You plant the seed and then years later, it provides fruit and sustenance. So we need to balance these activities. So this is about split. There's three of them that are gonna lead to now money, and there's a few others that are gonna lead to later money. So before we jump in, a quick introduction is in order. Welcome, my name is Adam Benzman, The Roof Strategist, and everything I do here, in the videos, in the podcasts, in my products and services, are designed to help you develop simple, personal sales strategies to smash your income goal. And the best way to do that is to find easy sales which we'll get started with right now. So if you are new here, click the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss a thing because everything I teach is actionable. That means you can start using it on the very next appointment, the next customer, the next sale to bring it in so you can smash your income goal and owners for your entire team as well. Let's jump in. So the six tips of balancing now money and later money. First, I wanna share a story of how this created. I wanna bring you back with me to the first or second year that I was a sales manager. And this was before CRM. We were running pen and paper, right? So we'd get a lead that would come into the office. And I want you to picture this. Here's our, here's our funnel, right? So we've got our lead at the top. This is an inbound lead. And I'm just gonna write inbound, oops. Let's back up. So those inbound leads would come into the office, be a phone call, it'd be a referral, it'd be someone saw a yard sign or got our mailer. There's all the different sources, online, direct mail, um, telemarketing, canvassers, whatever it was, okay? So we have our lead. Then we would call to set the appointment, which by the way, worst system in the world. If you have inbound leads, convert them to appointments on the spot. More on that later. So then the lead would come in, I'd write it on a piece of paper and I'd hand it to the rep and I'd be like, all right, now you gotta go call this lead and get the appointment set. So we'd call and then we'd have to convert that into an appointment, right? Then from there, it was yes or no, we closed or didn't close them. Okay, close or didn't. So if you look at this, this is a funnel that gets narrower as you go. It's a law of attrition. Top line leads, how many you make contact with, how many turn into appointment, do you close or do you, do you not close? So here I am, I'm sitting there in the office and I say, I wanna audit all of our sales because I wanna know, are we getting good leads off telemarketing? Which ones are we closing so we can allocate our budget to the ripest opportunity to generate leads? And I'm thinking to myself, we must be closing these things left and right. So I sit down with my pile of paper, these leads, we have the proper lead form, and I'm going through them and I'm referencing all the customer files that are in alphabetical order, the old school way, right? And I'm looking there, I'm like, oh my gosh, I ran the math, this is off memory, by the way, I didn't have a database so far as my memory goes. Guess what we closed of all of these leads that turned into this? How many total leads after all these pieces turned into a deal? It was roughly 30% from my memory, okay? Which means 70% was sales opportunities. That's huge, that's huge. So I'm sitting there and I say, holy crap, I thought we were closing all these deals. You know what the first thing I did was? Leads me to tip number one. By the way, the reason I share this, I, I wanna take this one step further. Of these 70%, this again could be issues with calling 
It was a broken system. You don't have someone call you and then you call them back. You set the appointment. That was a big lesson out of this, by the way, on top of reigniting these leads, which is the tip I'm gonna lead into here in a minute. But I want you to think, new salesperson reached out, he says, Adam, I ran 20 deals, I didn't close any. So if your commission, let's just see how this looks for a second. Your average commission, okay, is $1,000 and you've been doing this even for a few months or a few years, whatever that number is. In the last, let's just say six months, count how many deals haven't closed. So I'm gonna use 30 as a rough number because I have new sales guys that'll say, hey, I've been in this for a few weeks, I ran 20 appointments, they're self-generated leads, it doesn't matter. If you got in that home and talked to someone and didn't get it, that's an opportunity that didn't close. This times 30, that's $30,000 of opportunity. When I said a pile of cash, this is hiding inside there. If you're an owner and you're doing high volume, this number grows exponentially by a lot, all right? You can go back six months with all 10 sales reps, this number is a pile of cash. And we begin to see it when we use a CRM, and we can do deal value or estimated deal value based on your average sale. So we know this is huge, which leads me again, this is your pile of cash that's hiding. Tap into it. What do we do? First thing is this. We reignite all past leads, okay? Now I'm gonna put all in caps because I mean all, all right? All leads. It doesn't matter if you didn't close it. It doesn't matter if they said no to you. I don't care if it was two weeks ago. I don't care if it was two years ago. All of those leads are opportunities. You've already made contact. You are already familiar to them. It might have been the right, the wrong timing. Guess what? Your skills might have developed. What if the one thing you didn't say then you have now? Because we're always with that one strategy away. You might be at a different place. So all those leads, and that is exactly what Jeff did. Jeff reignited all leads. He's sitting on his, I, I'm, his I'm drawing a conclusion here that he's sitting on his couch. My guess, he's working from home, sitting on his couch, calling. When I'm working from home, I'm sitting on my couch. Can you imagine being in Jeff's shoes, sitting there, hey, it's snowing, no one else is doing anything, I'm gonna call up some old leads, and he signed a deal over the phone. This is amazing, all right? You can do the same thing. So tip number one is to reignite all leads. This is now money, all right? This will put cash in your pocket starting now. If there's anything you take from this video, do this, but don't leave yet, because I got five more for you. So let's go into number two. Referrals. All right, now, this is the, here's the deal. So many people say, Adam, I know I'm supposed to ask for referrals. We all do. But I want to ask you this. I'm going to challenge you right now. How many referrals did you ask for this week? Do you like the answer? Chances are you don't. Because I ask this question at almost every single sales meeting I've run for companies across the U.S., and you know what happens? People look around, I say, hey, I want you to raise your hand, tell me how many you asked for. And then I simplified it. With the number of fingers on your hand, show me how many you asked for. Hold the number of fingers with how many referrals you asked for this week. I get this, all the time. That means none, or one, or two, that's it. It is the easiest way to generate business, but we don't do it, because we're sheepish. So what do we do? We do a courtesy call. Don't be afraid of these. If there's an issue, you'll squash it. And believe me, it's better to do now than later. Hey, I just wanted to call and check in with you, Peggy. We did the roof however long ago. I wanted to see, if, is everything going well? Any questions for me? Great. Hey, you know, I forgot to ask you. How was your experience with us? Oh, you know, it was great, Adam. I loved your communication. Roof's great. Crew did a great job. Awesome, Peggy. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Hey, you know, did I tell you about our referral program? And then... Which, by the way, if you want to learn about my referral program, two options. Let's give you the free one first, right here. Watch this playlist on Referral Madness. You'll learn the strategy behind it, the incentives I use, and why it works so well. And then if you want to take the next step, if you have my marketing battle pack or the complete sales strategy, I include the printout cheat sheet to leave with the customer with a call script, emails to use, the whole works, okay? So here's the scoop. This is what we do. We, used, we use an open-ended question, okay? So we say, who? Do you know that I might be able to help? Not do you know anyone, right? That's yes or no. Who do you know? And then I list them. Any friends, family members, neighbors, or coworkers. Go through it slow. Any friends, any neighbors, family members, or coworkers. I'm giving them the category to think about, right? Name a car. Mm -mm, right? Now, now you're like, oh, car, uh, 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 and then you have to stutter. But if I said, what's your favorite truck? Boom, you're gonna give me at the very least a, a make, right? Really quickly, because I channel, I give you the lane to think through. I call it the creativity fast lane. So you list them out, who do you know, and then list any friends, 
family members, neighbors, or coworkers that I might be able to help the same way I helped you. And then again, you can use this. Watch that playlist I linked. I will put another one right here. There's a playlist to the Referral Madness, um, teaching you the incentive structure and how it works. And then again, Battle Pack and Complete Sales Strategy includes call scripts, the printout to leave with the customer, and then every single email that goes to that customer includes that referral request. And I'll touch on that here in a little bit as well. So number two is referrals. Again, this is now money. It doesn't matter, go back, start with the most recent customer, or work your way back, work the phones, okay? So that's now money. You can also do these over text. Number three, this is later money, reviews. Owners, this is a great time to incentivize your team because even if you're dominating neighborhoods and you just do mostly door knocking, people will Google you to verify you and reviews is what they wanna see. So similar as before, okay? Courtesy check. Ask how the experience was. If they say it went great, say, hey, you know what? Would you be comfortable sharing uh, your star rating uh, with, with others online? We're really trying to improve our, our presence online, and we know that the voices of our customer are the most valuable thing. And if you say we did great, I'd, I'd love to, if you, would you mind taking a moment to, to share your experience? Just click the star, type a few sentences. So again, and then you wanna send a direct link. So what I mean is don't just say, okay, write us a review on Google. You need to text and email them, which by the way, I do include these in the battle pack and complete sales strategy, uh, some, some copy paste messages for email, text, and phone call to, um, to get those reviews. And owners, you can incentivize like a dollar amount or a fun game to win those reviews, uh, get some competition going, especially in the off season. So at any rate, send a, a direct link. So if I want it on Google, just pull up where like as the box pops up for the star, copy paste that whole link and send it to them. Same with Facebook, wherever it is, okay? So another great way this will build the business over time. Let's go to number four. Number four, Josh asked me this one, my client. Newsletter. Newsletters can be done in two forms. They can be email, which is the cheapest and easiest way, and they can be done in the mail. But how do we do this? There's a few key points for you to remember when you're tapping into this database. You need to be seasonal. It needs to be along with the times, right? Seasons change. I know down south, if you're working the Florida market, um, there might be different, <laughs> less extreme seasons. You still have rainy times, okay? So seasonal needs to be relevant to what they're going through right now, okay? Relevant to the current times, okay? It needs to be valuable, something they can do. Why do they want to do this? You have to respect people's time. I respect your time by providing actionable, concise videos that you can use right away. If I just sat up here and told Fluff and said, you know, if I did a 16 minute video on the 16 reasons you should choose me as your next whatever it is, you'd be bored to tears. I make it about you. I value your time. You need to value your customer's time. So provide valuable information. I'll give you an example. Northern markets in, in the fall, talk about gutter cleaning, keeping the gutters clear and flowing so to prohibit ice dams. Or, hey, take actions for ice dams. Or here's the symptoms. If ice dams are happening, you need X, Y, and Z. If you're down south, how to prepare for uh, hurricane season or the rainy season. Or telltale signs that your roof is reaching its age. What does it mean if granules are coming out your downspouts? Provide valuable information and then, of course, course, you have your referral request and your CTA, which stands for call to action. Why it is. It's not just like, Whoop, remember me, right? You don't want to do that. Whoop, remember me. Everything should tell them exactly what to do. Hey, we have this great referral program. As our customer, you win X, Y, and Z for sharing the good word. Who do you know? Just reply here with a name. We'll take it from there. Call to action. If you need help with your roof, call us here. For this email, you know, whatever it is, your call to action. Call today for your free inspection. Call today for a free estimate. We're offering uh, X financing. Now we're doing windows, whatever the case may be. So your call to action. So this newsletter can go through these methods out to here. Again, this is later money. When to do it? Quarterly at the minimum. Quarterly or monthly. That's my best advice, quarterly or monthly. Don't go any, any more than that. Um, becomes a little too excessive for this kind of material. Okay, all right. So brings us to number five. This is one of my favorites. Insurance agents. Now, a couple notes. Um, one, in my complete sales strategy, I teach you as one of the 20, what I've identified as 25 sales opportunities from every customer. One of those is to introduce yourself to all current, to, uh, excuse me, all of your existing customers. So if I serve a customer, I introduce myself to the agent, okay? So I'm just gonna write the, the agent of all customers, introduced to all customers' agents. Then you have all past. This is a great way, same thing with those referral and reviews, you're reaching out to past customers. So you can say, hey, to all those past customers, um, you know, I meant to ask you this before, I apologize I didn't, I'd love to 
help you make sure that your insurance policy details in file are up to date. I was just gonna introduce myself to the agent, see if he or she needed any photos or videos or documentation of anything to make sure it's up to date. Now, same retail storm, doesn't matter. This is a great opportunity to connect, say, hey, we serve this mutual client. Um, I just wanna make sure you have everything. We upgraded their shingles, they're not on three tab anymore, it's dimensional. Just wanna make sure the records were all great. And by the way, if you have any other folks that may need help, we can help, here's how. So in the battle pack, use it if you have it. There's introductions for cold outreach and there's uh, letters for all of your current customers, emails, all that stuff. I also did an interview recently with Matthew Danskin from the Referral Restoration System. The guy, he, he's done an incredible job. He does it better than anyone I've seen. For like, that is his sole focus is like, okay, so you got the intro, or in even helping with getting those intros, and then how do you turn that into these deeper referral relationships? So to me, I, I wanna arm everyone with low tech, simple, actionable ways. Introduce yourself, start those relationships. Harness the power of your likability and, and your grit to do it. And for anyone that wants to take the next level with leveraging his tools and technology, check that out. Different, um, but complimentary and a phenomenal tool. So introduce yourself to those insurance agents and I'll link to a playlist on that right here for free. You guys can check that out. All right. By the way, one last thing. When we do this, we need to lead with value. And the whole goal is to make the agent look like a hero, all right? The agent is going through a hard time when they go through a claim. They don't wanna lose a customer. Retail, by the way, still applies. Homeowners often turn to their agent for these uh, referrals. So make the agent look like a hero. That's the big idea. I wanna help you shine with your customer. I know how important, and I'm sure they're important to you as they are to me, is taking care of customers. So I just wanted to provide some value and help you out through the process. All right, which leads us to number six, our final is address monitoring. Now, what do I mean by address monitoring? Address monitoring is available in virtually all the um, hail mapping processes. And by the way, if you're doing retail, you should still be doing this because when a hailstorm or windstorm or hurricane hits and you have address monitoring, any prospect or customer, it doesn't matter, prospect or customer, enter them in there, all right? And what will happen is you'll get an alert and says there's severe weather, you are the first on call. This is also later money. It doesn't matter if you had talked with them six months ago, a year ago, today, yesterday, it does not matter. When you monitor that address, if you're on retail, you say, hey, we don't do storm, guess what? Why wouldn't you want to, them to call you as opposed to the, the army of roofers that are gonna be in the neighborhood? So with these six items, which I'm just gonna recap right now, we have reigniting your past leads, referrals, okay, reviews, insurance agents, newsletters, and address monitoring. Put these to work starting right now and you will mine that pile of cash to start making money. And if you want even more, get a free copy of my Pitch Like a Pro Roofing Sales Training Video Library right here. And then let's continue our journey together by watching this video. See you in the next one.